If you are struggling with drawing Lewis structures or are confused on when to add double bronze or triple bonds or even when to add lone pair electrons, then this video is for you. Make sure you stick around until the very end of the video because after we tell you the four easy steps to drawing Lewis structures, we're then going to take you through some examples. So when it comes to drawing Lewis structures, there are four easy steps to follow. If you follow these steps every time, you will never draw a Lewis structure wrong again. Number one is to add up the number of Vance electrons present. Number two is to draw the skeleton structure and make sure to subtract the number of electrons that you used. Number three is to distribute the remaining electrons to the more electronegative atoms first. And number four is to use double or triple bonds to satisfy the octet rule. Now we're not always gonna use rule number four and that's only gonna be used when necessary. We're gonna work some examples here in a second so we're gonna show you how to use all of these rules. As long as you follow these rules in order, you should never draw a Lewis structure wrong again. So now let's look at some examples. In our first example, we will look at drawing a Lewis structure for CH4. I'm gonna put the rules over here to help us remember the different steps. Step number one is to add up the number of Vance electrons present. In CH4, I know I have a carbon and four hydrogens. Using my periodic table, I know that carbon has four valence electrons, and I know that each hydrogen has one valence electron, but because I have four hydrogens, I'm gonna to have to take that one and multiply it by four. And when I add these together, I get a total of eight electrons. It is important that we do this step correctly because eight is the number of electrons that we can use on our structure. I cannot use any more or any less than eight electrons. If I have more than eight or less than eight electrons in my structure, I automatically know that it is wrong. So step number two is to draw the skeleton structure. And what I mean by that is we are going to draw our base structure. You can kind of think of like a skeleton as the base of the human body. It's just the bare bones. So what this looks like is we put our central atom in the middle, and then we're going to attach the other atoms that are bonded to it using single bonds. So it'll look something like this. I'll put carbon in the middle, I'll put four single bonds coming off of carbon that I'm going to attach my four hydrogens to. This is the basic structure, the basic way that I can attach four hydrogens to the carbon. Now, you might be thinking, well, how do I know that carbon goes in the middle and the four hydrogens are on the outside? One way to think about this is the element that is usually first in the formula is going to be the central atom. Or you can think about if I have an element that is by itself, that element tends to be the central atom. It's not always a definite rule, but those are things to think about when trying to, to determine what is the central atom. Now that I have my skeleton structure, I need to subtract the number of electrons that I used. It is important to remember that a single bond contains two electrons. In this structure, I can see that I have used a total of four single bonds. So that means I've used a total of eight electrons. I only had eight electrons to start with, and if I subtract eight electrons from that, I end up with zero electrons to use. So now we are done with step number two. Step number three says to distribute the remaining electrons to the more electronegative atoms first, but I don't have any more electrons to distribute, so I skip this step and go to step four. Step four says to use double or triple bonds to satisfy the octet rule. Remember that the octet rule tells us that elements are satisfied with eight valence electrons, with the exception being hydrogen and helium only being satisfied with two. When I look at my structure here, I can see that there are two electrons attached to each hydrogen, each single bond again, representing two electrons, and the carbon has a total of eight electrons around it. The four single bonds around carbon give me a total of eight electrons around carbon. So each hydrogen is happy or satisfied with two electrons, and then the carbon is also satisfied with the eight electrons. So in this structure, I am not going to make any double or triple bonds because each element is already satisfied and they already satisfy the octet rule. So this is the structure for CH4. In our second example, we will look at drawing the Lewis structure for NH3. So step number one, I'm going to add up the number of valence electrons present. I know that nitrogen has five valence electrons and hydrogen has one valence electron, but I have three hydrogens, so I'm going to multiply that one by three. When I add those together, I get a total of eight valence electrons. And then I'm going to follow step number two and draw my skeleton structure. Nitrogen is the first element here in the formula, so I'm gonna put nitrogen in the middle, 
and then I'm going to attach my three hydrogens to the nitrogens using single bonds. When I look at this skeleton structure, I can count up my three single bonds that are each two electrons apiece, and I know that I've used six electrons. So I can subtract six from eight, and I'm going to have a two left over. This tells me that I have two more electrons to put on my structure, which that leads me to step number three, distribute the remaining electrons. And when I distribute them, remember that the rule tells us to distribute them to the more electronegative atom first. Remember the periodic trend for electronegativity tells us that nitrogen has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, so I'm going to add the two electrons to nitrogen. Once I do this, I'll subtract those two electrons and I'll end up with zero electrons left. This means that I cannot add or take away any more electrons from this structure. So now that I'm done with step three, I can move on to step four that tells me to use double or triple bonds to satisfy the octet rule. I can look here though and see that this structure is already satisfied. Each hydrogen has a single bond attached to it so that each hydrogen only has two electrons, which makes it satisfied. Nitrogen has three single bonds around it, but also a lone pair of electrons. This gives a total of eight electrons around nitrogen, which makes it satisfied as well. So I do not have to use any double or triple bonds on this structure. So this is the structure for NH3. In our last example, we will look at drawing the Lewis structure for CO2. I'll start by adding up the number of valence electrons present, and I know that carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, and I have two oxygen in the formula, so I'll multiply that by two. And when I do this, I'll get a total of 16 valence electrons to use on my structure. I'll then draw my skeleton structure, which will consist of a carbon in the middle, because that's the first element. Then I'll attach each oxygen to either side of the carbon using a single bond. I've used two single bonds to draw this skeleton structure, so that gives me a total of four electrons used. So I'll subtract the four electrons from 16 to get 12 electrons left over. I'll then move on to step number three and distribute those 12 electrons to the more electronegative atoms. In this case, that would be oxygen. I'm going to start by putting six electrons around one oxygen, and then I can move and put six electrons around the other. I've put out a total now of 12 electrons, so I'll subtract those 12 from the 12 remaining that I had, which will give me zero electrons left over. At this point, I can neither add nor take away any more electrons. So now I'm going to move on to step four, and I'm going to make sure every element is satisfied. Each oxygen we can see right now has eight electrons around it. It has one single bond and three lone pairs, which gives me a total of eight electrons. However, when I look at the carbon, I see two single bonds around the carbon, which is only four electrons. So in this example, the carbon is not yet satisfied, which tells me I'm going to have to use double or triple bonds to satisfy the octet rule. So when this happens, what you have to do is take a lone pair of electrons on the element that is satisfied and turn that into a bond between the two elements. We're taking that lone pair from being only around that one element, and now it's being shared within a bond. So when I do that, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to take away the two lone pairs from oxygen, and we're going to turn that into a bond between carbon and oxygen. And now you can see here I have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. Each oxygen still has eight electrons around it. The difference is there's two bonds and two lone pairs to get a total of eight. And the important thing here is now carbon is satisfied. Carbon now has two bonds on either side for a total of four bonds. And remember, each single bond has two electrons, so that gives me a total of eight electrons around carbon, now making carbon satisfied. So when I look at this structure now, I can see that every element is satisfied with eight electrons, and that tells me my structure is good. So this here is the structure for CO2. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to draw Lewis structures. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe as this is the best way to help us on our journey to make science simple. If you enjoyed this video, here are a couple more videos you might find helpful.